Welcome back to Retro Access. In this episode, I'm going to deep dive further into the Atari VCS Linux operating system and show you how it is protected uh, from intrusion, at least by design. Let's take a look. So if you remember from one of the earlier videos where I was just learning more about the Atari VCS and looking under the covers at the Linux distribution, we found out that it's based on a system called Apertus. And there was a few unanswered questions that I'm now going to dig into. So to begin, the first thing I wanna do is explore partitions five and six, explain to you what those are and what happens if you start tinkering around, and also tell you a little bit more about the tamper-proof uh, parts of this of this system. Uh, they did include some things in here that make the Atari VCS operating system somewhat tamper-proof and I'll explain more to you in, about that here in just a second. So in this setup I've got partitions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. I've got mount points ready so I'm going to begin by mounting those and if you remember, that is dev MMC block, and you type in the partition number and match it up. So we're going to mount partition one, two, three, and four. Remember, one, two, and three are EFI partitions. Four is the var file system. Five and six, we'll get to in a second. Uh, seven and eight our root file systems, and nine is where our user uh, data is stored. I'm actually not going to mount that one right now because we don't need it, but those are the partitions. So we can type mount, verify that they're mounted. Now here's what got me interested in trying to figure this out. Every time I tried to mount partition seven or eight, which is the root FS, I noticed that it was marked as read only. Uh, and so the first thing I tried to do was say, well, okay, well, let's, Let's force mount it as read write and see if that, if that does anything. Um, and it would say, cannot remount read write, it is write protected. So I thought, well, that's interesting. Uh, then I remembered there's uh, file system flags that you can set. So we can take a look at that by running the tune2fs command and take a peek here and I'll show you. You'll notice here, this is the root fs version seven and under file system features, I found that the read only flag is set. So what I began to do was say, well, what if I turn off the read only flag? Will it let me mount it? So I did it. I did that. Tune2FS dash capital O and remove the flag read only. Okay. So I can verify that it removed it. It's gone. It's no longer there. And I can now remount it. And we can see here now it's read write. So now that it's read write, that means I can actually go into this file system and actually write a file. So as an example, I can create an empty file called test. And here it is. Now I couldn't do that before. And if I go to file system eight, you'll note that eight is also a read only and has that flag set. Okay, so if I try to go in there and touch the same file or create the same empty file, I'll get a read-only file system error, so that's expected. But knowing that I removed the flag and wrote the file, well now what happens? Well, if I go to reboot Atari VCS into that operating system, let me show you what happens. And this goes back to what file systems five and six are, and we'll come back and explore that in just a second. But let me show you what happens if you tamper with the Atari VCS Linux operating system. Uh, so it's gonna reboot, you're gonna see it pull up the Atari logo. By default, my Atari is booting directly into the VCS OS. And you'll note, it's gonna give an error. It actually went to a blank screen. If I hit escape, you'll notice here this error message, Verity device detected corruption after activation. So what does that mean? What did I do and how do you fix this? So let me go ahead and reboot again. It's gonna actually do this a couple of times. It's got a, a basically a timeout where it's gonna try it several times and after a certain number of retries or time, 
uh, the system decides that it can't boot, can't fix the problem and just sends it to reboot as you saw in that error message. So I'm gonna hold in escape, boot back into my Lubuntu Linux distribution. So we'll boot back into that. So let me talk really briefly about what just happened. So again, I mentioned that I turned off the read only capabilities, wrote a file, and you would think, well, that shouldn't really do anything. Why would that break something? Well, what it is, is there's a, those five and six partitions is something called Verity. Um, if you read more about Verity in the Linux kernel, there's a couple different ways you can achieve this, but particularly using a file system partition, in this case, five and six are Verity partitions. So what happens is, is those partitions have on them binary data that's written that has a set of checksums. Those checksums are when the system boots, the VCS OS looks at those checksums and says, has this file system been modified? And if it has, the check fails, which is exactly what happened here. So let's take a deeper look at the partitions. So using the KDE partition manager, this is a more visual way to look at your partition scheme. Uh, here, MMC block zero, this is the internal drive where the Atari VCS operating system is stored, and here are partitions one through nine, and here are five and six. Now you'll note the label uh, is Verity A and Verity B. Now these don't have a traditional Linux file system formatted on them, which is why you see unknown. So you can't mount these and browse through them and look at them, there are other ways to look at it, but basically it's encryption or cryptography based storage. So you really can't do much with these uh, without having the key. Um, but note here, you've got five is Verity A and six is Verity B. Now notice also these other partitions are marked as A and B, root FS A and B. So going back from the first uh, episode where we looked at the file system layout, we know that one is the old version that shipped with the VCS and the second one is the latest version that has been flashed. So we know that that's how it works. So these Verity drives correspond to each of those. And this is how the system does, uh, you know, obviously uh, checks to make sure it hasn't been compromised or hacked or, or you know, sec security breached or, uh, or what have you. So that's how it works. So very interesting stuff there. Okay, so to fix and undo what I've done, I can't just delete the file and make it read write because at this point in time, the file system has been forever altered. So the checksum will never match. I've essentially made this irreparably fixable. So I cannot fix this problem. So what I'm gonna have to do is essentially flash or restore from a previous backup using the DD method that I've shown in, in previous episodes. If you haven't seen those, please subscribe to the channel, go back and look, and you can locate those episodes and learn more about how I've taken backups and done restores. So I'm gonna do another restore, get this back to where it is, and get the system running once again. All right, so we've uh, got this restoring. So this is, good. this is gonna take probably a few more minutes to complete, and then I should have my system back to my previous backup. Uh, so one hint, if you are tinkering with the system, make frequent backups. Uh, that will save you a lot of time and hassle. Uh, also, just to talk a little bit more about the tamper-proofing. So uh, obviously Atari intended it so that you don't modify that operating system. I was digging in more and more trying to understand the architecture of this thing. And if you're interested in doing more exploration on your own, I highly recommend going to the apertus.org web page there's a tremendous amount of documentation and information on how it's designed it doesn't tell you everything about how atari has implemented this because there are changes that they made but there's a lot of recommendations uh, architecture discussions and things like that here that you can learn from if you want to experiment on your own uh, so going back to the tampering, uh, one of the things I did verify, you're, you can do anything you want on that partition nine. I mean, assuming you're not you know, blowing things away and, and changing you know, the application structure, uh, but you can write other things. You can try and write your own software. You can deploy other things on there. Uh, it, seems to does, it seems to not care about that drive at all. There's no checks or, or verification that's done on the storage drive. There's also no checks that I'm aware of that's done on partition four, which is slash var. Uh, there's nothing there either. So those seem to be available for you to, to work with uh, should you want to do that. 
So that's it for today. I've learned quite a bit and I hope you have as well. Uh, this has been a lot of fun just tinkering and learning and seeing how this thing was designed. Um, certainly what I've done, you can replicate yourself with caution. Uh, be sure you do your research. Um, I spent a lot of time reading on the Apertus website, uh, finding out about the architecture, understanding you know, how things work. Um, also learning about Verity file systems or, or Verity partitions or what's called uh, disk map or DM Verity. There's also something called FS Verity. So just learning about all these concepts. These are all things that while I'm an experienced Linux user, these are still concepts that are new to me. So I know I'm learning every day and I hope you are as well from this channel. So if you like the channel, please do subscribe, uh, you know, give me a like and make sure you share this thing out, help others find this and that way they can learn as well. So we'll see you next time on Retro Axis. Thank you.